Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to From the Depths. This episode is going to kick off right with a fight, as I have a couple of baddies overhead. A couple of these guys, dusters, and the dusters currently refuse to go down. Now, the weapons that I have currently set up here, um, interestingly that one's not even connected. Okay, uh, that's probably to do with me deleting one of the blocks here. At any rate, we need to make sure that those little aircraft get killed off. Unfortunately, I think that the current way that I have my anti-air missiles set up is not the best. And um, that means that they might not be able to attack. On top of that, there's something bigger that my missiles feel like is a bigger threat. The Conger. Unfortunately, I think that they won't be able to do that much damage. Uh, because they don't get into range. <laughs> that would help. Okay, in that case we're going to go with short-range missiles. It's been asked quite a few times, by the way, um, how do I get into third-person view in adventure mode? Well, I'll post a explanation in the description down below, and that way you can do it for yourself. It does require a small edit of your save file, which of course does not work if you're actually playing with said save file. So make sure you are not in the save file, uh, go back to the main menu and follow the steps of the thing that is laid out in the description. Anyway, um, the conger that is over here, I'm not sure if that's the biggest threat right now. Because I don't believe that it can do a whole lot of damage against me, but it is valuable. 169,974 materials. Of course, I won't get all of that, but I will be glad with a, uh, well, I'd say a portion of that. So, if I can keep this thing, or if I can try and keep taking this thing down, and thereby make sure it lands, slash crash lands, then I might be able to take it down with the huge torpedoes. In the meanwhile, however, I keep taking damage. So we're going to set our depth to minus 250. We're going to go deeper. And hopefully that will make sure that we don't get hit anymore. Also, I'm probably going to go with a deck gun to go for super, super cavitating shells, and that way I don't have any problem with water, so I can just shoot up at aircraft. Especially considering, oh, there go the missile interceptors. <laughs> Especially considering that right now, um, those aerial units are a bit too maneuverable. They're a bit too agile. I have a bit of room over here on the bow. It will, however, cause some issues with hydrodynamics. So I'm going to have to sacrifice a little bit in that department in order to get a bit more firepower. It's always going to be a bit of a trade-off. Anyway, um, I have been explained by, I think it was British Knight, that I should set these things up to fire every 20 seconds if an enemy is detected. Because otherwise I keep launching these things, and he made a very good point, um, I will then um, keep wasting materials, which is not great. So, if there's an enemy within that, then I'll fire the weapons. And uh, I'm going to do that every 20 seconds. There. That's going to fire the sonar buoy. Or the... Um, yeah, the sonar buoy. So that's good there. We can paste that here. Over here, I can actually not, or actually I don't need to use the uh, ACBs here. I can just use an anti-missile controller. And that way I can make sure these things only fire when there's a weapon nearby. Weapon receiver not connected, no weapon controls. Which is turned off. Aha. Yes. Now you should be much happier. Huh. It still says no weapon controlled, surprisingly. Okay. Defense. Anti-missile controller, that way. There we don't go, because he's still controlling no weapons. Why is that? Are you controlling any weapons? You're not. Controls turrets placed... Ah. Uh, yes. So... Actually, this thing, unfortunately, seemingly, does not control anti-missile systems as they are not on a turret. You need to place a turret with an APS. Yeah, so, my mistake. I should have uh, read more into that. So, back we go. Uh, ACBs. 
when enemy weapon system is in range in the form of a torpedo with a maximum range of 1500 then I want you to fire your weapon so weapon systems fire 2 meter range copy that and paste that now what you can hear of uh, going on in the background is the rest of the weapons which are being used to target uh, well anything that the AI can find which is fine that's exactly what I wanted it to do now over here down at the bottom this is where my turrets going to sit so we're gonna take a new sub object let's make it a three meter turret and more importantly I need to be designing the shell first start with the end in mind advanced cannons it's going to be a pretty simple shell. Oh, they changed this thing. Uh, gunpowder casing. I need to have a super cavitation base. Removes 90% of the slowdown incurred by water. Also removes entirely the chance for projectiles skimming off of the water. The lower warhead payloads to only 75% of standard. Um, so I won't do as much damage, but hopefully sufficient. And this is going to be a sort of uh, underwater flak gun. So I'm also going to need a flak warhead body. A... I'm not sure if a timed fuse is going to work, actually. Is a laser system going to work underwater? I guess we'll find out. Uh, nose, flak head. Let's say that uh, the gauge... What sort of a range do I want? 424 meters walls of velocity. Huh. How about a 120? Effective time? Five seconds? Huh. It's not a whole lot. I hope that I can clear the water with that. Um, what sort of a shell do I need? Clip length required, one meter. Good. Okay. So, back to the turret. This means that I can start using my favorite thing, which is the belt loader. And the belt loader is capable of very quickly putting out a lot of damage. A lot of shells. And keep in mind, I only really need to make sure that the target, whatever the target is, falls into the water. Because once it's in the water, it's in my domain. And that is exactly where I would want them. So over here, we're going to have, um, let's say, a couple of gauge increasers. Maybe one or two gauge increasers is enough. I just went with cooling units because you're going to need those anyway. Thing is a bit, a bit too far forward, actually. I'm going to build this thing a slightly farther back. So let's say around about here. Sub objects down to there. Okay, once again, advanced cannon, cooling units. And then cooling units like that. No, it's too low. I want it one higher. Gauge increaser, cooling units, mantlets, full NTR mantlets, because I'm not expecting to fire this thing at, that's not how that works, uh, at all when it comes to dealing with surface threats. I'd only want to be targeting aerial units. So that's that. Um, maybe put a firing piece in place first, then the AA mantlet, otherwise it's not going to work at all. Then we're going to go with a couple of barrels more barrels in this case might be better it will be sticking out a little bit it's probably not going to be the final form of the submarine either so that's fine a 120 millimeter gauge i'd say that is enough although ideally i want to be firing these things faster number of barrels four of them which now gives me a gauge of 48 millimeters that is not quite high enough 72 95, 117, 
139. What if I go for 117s? 117. Fair enough. 117s it is. So this gauge increaser is one too many. Okay, now time for the belt loaders. Belt feeders, actually. Uh, here. I'm going to be playing turret tetras again. I think I can make it like this. And then an ammo clip. I just have to make sure that the whole thing still has enough clearance to turn. That's rather important. So a couple there, there, uh, and then here. All of you. That one. Force on all. What sort of a reload can we get? Uh, we're looking at an autoloader limit of 108, a cooling limit of 57. That's going to be a problem. So this thing fires almost twice per second. That's a respectable rate of fire, I think. But I'm not sure if it's enough to take down whatever I need taking down, which will be stuff on the surface, or rather, aerial. It's the laser. No fuse setting yet. Provide weapon with a target. Yes, coming up in a moment. We're going to go with a five-way cooling splitter. And just sort of wrap these things around. It is a pretty small turret here. So I might have problems with trying to fix the way that this thing cools down. And let alone with the way that the rec uh, recoil is handled. Okay, cooling limit 107. Good enough. But... No, you know what? I'm actually going to go with this for now. I'll probably have to remove some of the blocks here, including the hearthstone. So let's start with that. Uh, where are we? Here. Now immediately replace that before I manage to kill myself. Wait, what? I'm not dying? I just removed my heartstone. Where, where's my other heartstone then? Oh, here. Never mind. Apparently, I had two. Uh, this PID is controlling pitch with pitch propulsion. Uh, right. Remove my little office here. Just make sure that this thing still has a connection. I think that was also my depth controller that I just removed. That's not great. Control. PID. Here, this is depth controller. We're going to use air pump for that. Altitude above mean sea level. Enable fake set points. Requested minus 250. And the other one is the pitch. Pitch, use propulsion pitch, off we go. Okay, I still have a lot of room left on this thing. So what I'm thinking of doing is just adding another row so that I have a bit more loader, a bit more uh, loading capacity. And let's see how the most efficient way of doing that would be. Auto loader. Belts. Um, here. I don't really want to make this thing a big power hog or a big uh, resource hog. So I'm going to try not doing that. And I'm sure the people who have far more experience with this game are cringing at the turret design. So be it. I am not an expert at the game, nor am I pretending to be, nor do I really want to be. I like figuring things out. Okay, how are we doing now? 
Uh, auto load limits 137, cooling limit 120. So we would need more cooling. And I would also need more recoil absorbers. That can be addressed. So this thing is going to have another cooler. And another one. What are we looking at? Gauge is down to 95. Oh, crap. That's not good. Cooling unit. Add a gauge increaser. Let's add another gauge increaser then. And another cooling limiter or cooling unit like that. The hell? Cooling vents. No, let's go for a gauge increaser because something's not quite right here. There we go. Now we're back at 117. Okay, no shell loaded. Correct. Get on that because I want to know what the stats are on this gun. Uh, 137, 151. So right now it is the auto loader or the lack of. That's the problem. So we're going to have another loader here. Another clip. And another input. Add force status 151 and 151 quite good APS maximum rate of fire 150 now we need to absorb 921 in recoil right where am I going to put my recoil absorbers I can put some here because it's not a 360 spinning turret anyway I think they don't work over there but they do work over here and here, and here. And now we have more absorption than we have recoil. Very good. So now I need to make sure that this thing can fire. <coughs> AI, uh, local weapon controller. It's gonna sit, let's say over there. Wireless receiver, like that. Wireless, actually hold off with that for a second. I first want to tell this thing how to work. Uh, range brackets. Everything up to 1500 meters. Range brackets, or sorry, altitude brackets. Everything that is, let's say, 5 meters above surface level. Something like that. And then make sure that there's a fail safe. I do not want to be targeting my own ship. And a wireless receiver on the other side. State your intent. Turret elevating. Current depth, 200 meters. It is entirely possible that the target is at a greater elevation than I can currently hit. And on top of that, I don't have all my shells loaded, so all the turret can do now is track, but not much more than that. It can only look at the target and wait for the shells to get loaded. So now we can close the hull back up. Is that a two? No, that's a one. There. We seem to have a lot of incoming cram shells. But by the looks of it, they won't be a problem. Now let's see if I can make this thing look a little better. Um, is heavy armor a good idea? Maybe not. What are these? Connect a block in front with an or okay. Let's just go for metal. I'm not going to go with the casemate. Not on this gun. And let's say I want it like that. That corner being a triangle corner. One slope here. That's a double block. Not a double block. And over here, a three meter beam. And another. And a triangle corner. Oh, sorry. A triangle corner here. 
inverted corner there, slope, and block, and block. That's the short range missiles going out. Small missiles. Okay, I think we can speed this thing back up again. Let's go to one time speed. I don't like the way that that turret's behaving. Wait one. Wait one. I'm gonna set firing restrictions for this turret, otherwise it's gonna accidentally or intentionally blow up my own turret. Uh, required extra before firing, yes. Um, I cannot see this thing like this. Let's say minus 120 to plus 120. There. So it can fire in a forward firing arc. Maybe I can take it a bit more, maybe 150 to 150. That way it shouldn't be targeting the command or the, the conning tower. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, those cram shells are getting quite close. Tricky. Still got those small dusters overhead. Okay, back to full speed. Loads of missiles floating up to the surface. Almost loaded. 110 out of 187. 120. What is bombarding me with all this stuff? Maybe the conger. Conger is an altitude of minus 10. If I'm not mistaken, that means that you're susceptible to torpedoes, which are now going out. Uh, F9. There we go. Shell's going out. I have no idea if that's going to hit anything. I think it is. Well, accuracy leaves something to be desired on these guns, but that one duster is down. Or is it? It's behaving a little erratically. Quite, <laughs> quite erratically. Uh, did we hit it? No, not really. And there we go. Once it's hitting the water, it pops a balloon. Immediately takes off again. But the AA gun is making life a little more difficult on these things. Initially, they were very much operating uncontested. Their life just got more interesting, with sudden flak popping up out of nowhere. Unfortunately, it seems like it's not accurate enough. Not quite good enough. So that's something I might need to work on. But especially against bigger targets, I think I have a pretty pretty decent chance of taking them out. Let's turn the HUD back on. Yeah, they've both been damaged, the Duster Marines, which is more than I could say a few minutes ago. Ooh! 21,000. Don't mind if I do. Turn to port. We need to be heading west-ish. Right? Yes, there. Give me more speed. With an upgraded steam engine, I can actually go quite a bit faster. Which is nice. Turn... How fast can I go? 10 meters per second. 11. 12. That's all the small missiles going off. Duster still at 91. Other duster at 96. Okay. 88. 
it got hit again. Maybe I would benefit from having a bigger anti-air gun. What if I make something anti-air-ish? That one's dead. Um, that is larger caliber. Like a 240 or something. I want a large shell explosion. Flak radius, 19 meters. Currently, with the 117s, the flak radius is 13 meters. So it's, it's going to increase it a bit. Maybe not enough. give it rail draw that would make it faster so we need to make it it's a sort of semi rail gun rail draw 3395 shell would go from 440 to 650 give or take so it would be substantially faster but it would also require a bit of a rework on that gun we pick up the resources We did, oh, it's over there. You'd be turning southwest. Yeah, I think I need a bigger gun. When dealing with air threats, I mean. Or better missiles. Speaking of, the missiles that I have right now over here not really working as well as I hoped. Because they don't seem to be tracking the target as well as I would like. That's probably because they're too big. Which is ironic for small missiles. But the problem here is that I gave them too many modules. And because of that, they are now unable to turn fast enough. The weapon simply got too big. So I'm going to do this in reverse. Missiles. Uh, small missiles. Hatch gantry. I can keep that there. Then a small gantry. One, whoops. Uh, yeah, here, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, no, that can be the launcher, I think. Connectors. Controller. How big is my missile now? Oh, we need a variable thruster. Uh, a few fins. That's, I think, it's too many fuel tanks. Thrust duration, 37 seconds. Yeah, that's too many fuel tanks, but not enough lifetime. Regulator, frag warheads, activator seeker. Pretty much. This way, they can turn 73 degrees per second. Huh. What if I give them a turning thruster? 142 degrees per second. And then I might still have a little bit too much thrust relative to what I need. But I can also say... Um, won't be used until this much time has elapsed. Yeah, let's say three seconds. And then the frag warheads are fine. Fuel, 25 seconds. Lifetime, 20 seconds. It's okay that I have a bit more fuel. Because this is if it goes in a straight line. Once that turning thruster starts using a thrust... It's not going to go as fast. Uh, start delay. Let's set that to three seconds. Two and a half. Because it's going to take them a bit of time to get up to the surface. And now I can have ejectors on both sides here. Also, IFF. And staggered fire and on. Delay. 0 0.5 seconds. Give them a weapon controller. Or actually, no, let me fire them. I think my four slots available. It is not. What else do I have on the four? Oh, these things, of course. Yeah, that one. Three is available. Okay. Um, this one. Switch to number three. This thing is going to travel to the surface first, which is going to 
cut into its lifetime pretty substantially. Altitude, minus 100. Huh. This is going to cut into its lifetime a lot. Because they only have 20 seconds to live. Yeah. This is not quite going to work out. Because they simply don't have a lifetime. So, I think I'm going to make them one, one line larger. Taller. Simple. No, not simple. Medium small missiles here. Gantries. Remove all of those things on the sides. The ejectors. Not there. Connectors. Now they were even longer than this, by two blocks. So I'm hoping that this is going to make it a bit better. Ejector add-ons. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, wrong line. Okay, listen up. Variable thruster, check. That's a ton of fuel tanks. Regulator. Regulator. I'm actually going to add a ballast tank. Uh, final buoyancy, all of it. This way I hope to get these things to the surface faster. And then a prediction guidance. No, actually a turning thruster and there a prediction guidance. Uh, lifetime, 30 seconds. Fuel time... 50 seconds. That is a lot of fuel. Let's switch this to a frag warhead. 37 seconds. That's fine. Sea skimming is fine. Copy the all launch pads. Set that to 3. Oh, whoops! <laughs> That's all of them. Oh well. Oh, I picked up the twenty-four, th the, the 21,000, by the way. Now, they do ascend faster, but I, feel, I still think it's not quite fast enough. Because this is taking them about, what, 10, 15 seconds to get up to the surface. Now they're all going to target the Simoon, but they don't have the time. If I don't maneuver at 250 meters depth, it might be more doable. Where are you? Still a duster, aren't you? Yeah. I think I might have taken care of one of the dusters, but not both. And over there's the Simoon. Right. So that's what they were trying to target, not this little guy. Okay, make my depth. 100. We're going to see if this works better if I don't have the same depth. And um, in this case, I would also very much appreciate having a staggered fire rate on. Because it's nice seeing a whole bouquet go off like that, but it doesn't really do much. And a IFF here. Staggered fire rate on. Well, let's put it back to 0.5 seconds. Depth minus 155. Ascending quickly. Where's that duster? There. Right there. Okay, I'm not sure if that duster is warm enough to lock onto with a... Uh, what you call that? Infrared seeker, but I'm going to try anyway. See, now it doesn't take them as long to get to the surface. See, he's coming. What do you mean? You cannot find the guy? How? Is that thing not warm enough? That duster? This is not working. Okay. Infrared's not working. Activator seeker. Yeah, that should be fine. Thrust before locking on. 60%. Try again. 
I need to have a better weapon against those dusters. No, that's the Simone. Because I think that the anti-air gun sort of works. But not quite as much as I would like. Just launching a whole ton of these. Nope, the Simone's the bigger radar return. So that's what they're targeting. Hmm. And they probably don't have the range to get there. Target range, three kilometers out. But they either don't have the fuel or the lifetime. There, you can already see some of them exploding. There we are. Yeah. So if I'm going to go with a weapon like that... Ow. I'm going to have to go with something a little... Bigger, I think. Hmm... Let's uh, stop the drills for now, because they might take engine power. Hmm. Okay, well, we're going to have to fine-tune this one, but we'll do that in the next episode. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Um, I might already have recorded the episode by the time that I get to your suggestions, so please keep that in mind. But I will try to incorporate as many suggestions as possible. For now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon in the next episode of the Red October.